Hi, welcome to another edition of Entertainment Elite. I'm your host today, Andrew. Todd's not here today, so you got just me. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the UFC welterweight division. We're going to pretty much try and cover a little bit of everything at 170. You know, the top contenders, the upcoming title fight, and where the division should go from here. Um, let's start off with GSP versus Nick Diaz. Um, obviously, I'm going to believe that G uh, GSP is going to win this fight because no fighter has come from Strike Force and been able to do anything in the UFC. Jake Shields is a prime example of that. He came in, had a split decision win over Martin Campman which I'm a firm believer that Jake lost that fight, or if anything, it was a draw. And then he immediately gets a title shot and gets outclassed by a one-eyed GSP. Okay? That's just a prime example. And now they're trying to say that if he beats Jake Ellenberger, that he's going to get another title shot, which I don't believe that that is anywhere near where the division needs to go right now. We're going to cover that in a second. Back to Nick Diaz, GSP. As far as everything like that... Strike Force is a good farm club for fighters in the UFC. It's a good place to get their start. I don't want to take anything away from fighters in Strike Force, but they're not at the same level of competition as fighters in the UFC. That's why Nick Diaz left to go to Strike Force in the first place. That's why Dan Henderson went to Strike Force. And I will never take away what Dan Henderson has done for the sport of MMA. But at the same time, he lost his only two title fights in the UFC. He lost to Rampage and he lost to uh, Anderson Silva. And now they're talking about bringing Dan Henderson back to fight Anderson Silva. I don't know what makes them think that it's going to be any different of an outcome than the last fight. We're not talking 185 today, we're talking 170, so we're going to get away from that, but it just goes to prove my point of the strike force people just cannot hang with the level of competition in the UFC. Okay, let's talk a little bit about John Fitch. Um, he is my belief is the true number one contender for the belt at 170. Jake Shields doesn't come close. He's got a one on one record in the UFC. Yeah, he didn't lose a fight for six years, and I've looked up his record. He fought some pretty impressive people, but there's also quite a few people on his record that you're like, who? You know, John Fitch. All right, let's talk John Fitch. His last fight that he finished was in June of 2007. And everybody says that the reason John Fitch hasn't got a title shot again is because he doesn't finish fights exciting. I don't know how many GSP fights you guys have watched recently, but the last fight that George St. Pierre actually finished in the middle of a round was the fight when he won the belt for the second time against Matt Serra. He finished Matt Serra with knees to the body. Okay. That was the last fight that he finished, and that was in April of 2008. Technically, it goes as a TKO, doctor stoppage, or round corner stoppage whenever he fought BJ Penn because BJ didn't come out for the fifth round. But George did not stop the fight himself. The last fight that he finished somebody by submission, TKO, or knockout was Matt Serra. And again, that was April of 2008. So I don't understand how they can sit there and say that John Fitch is not an exciting fighter. The man has one loss in the UFC. If you want to get technical, that is a better winning percentage than the champion at 170, George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre has two losses in his career, and both of them come in the UFC. And for future reference folks, I do a lot of talking about the UFC because I'm more interested in what the UFC, what the fighters have done in the UFC. It goes to the higher caliber of opponents as opposed to other promotions. Okay. You know, you got upcoming fights at 170 and you got a lot of up and coming fighters at 170. You got Anthony Rumble Johnson. Rumble is going to be a great fighter, all right? You got Matt Hughes who's in my opinion still in the mix whether or not he'll ever get there is irrelevant. Um, he's fighting Josh Koscheck now at UFC 135. Um, it's going to be a great wrestling match between the two of them. However, I think that Matt holds the um, the cards to beat Josh Koscheck. Not saying he will. We'll talk about that when we do our one, one UFC 135 predictions. Okay. Let's talk Jake Shields. I don't like Jake Shields. Um... It's nothing against him as a fighter. I don't think he's done anything. Um, yeah, he fought in Strike Force. 
again woo um yeah he just doesn't do it for me he came in fought Martin Campman to a split decision which I'm a firm believer was a draw or a loss for Jake Shields he immediately gets a title shot in my opinion the number one contendership is nowhere near Jake Shields Jake Shields needs to prove himself before that'll ever happen and he hasn't proved it in his two fights so far in the UFC and he's not going to prove it against Jake Ellenberger um, they want to prove it to me Jake Shields versus John Fitch for the number one contendership end of discussion if Jake wins he gets the title shot if John Fitch wins he gets the title shot uh, I'm sure that through the course of these shows and through everything else you're gonna realize that I'm a huge John Fitch fan and so is Todd when he sits here we're a firm believer that John Fitch is the number two welterweight in the world no questions hands down and the true holder to the gate key of the title shot at 170 if you want a title shot you need to go through John Fitch until that happens nobody is going to be a true contender at 170 and that's my personal opinion um, and again I'm not trying to take anything away from the other fighters at 170 there's a lot of talented fighters there's BJ Penn who's gonna fight Carlos Condit and that's gonna be a great fight there's Rumble's got a fight coming up October 1st uh, Matt Hughes is fighting you got Josh Koscheck all of these people are legitimate threats at 170 but again, John Fitch is where it all lies to me. John Fitch is the one that needs to get the title shot. Um, Jake Shields, he's a great fighter. And as far as the GSP fight goes, everybody talked about his jiu-jitsu game. Jake Shields' jiu-jitsu game. Oh, uh, GSP's never fought anybody with his level of jiu-jitsu. Well, you might be right, but we never saw it. Jake, you're a wrestler. Why did you not try to take him down? You tried to throw him off the game by striking with him, but you can't strike with GSP. At 170, he's one of the most elite strikers, if not the most elite striker at that weight class. Um, the only one that would rival him, and it's nowhere near that caliber yet, in my opinion, is going to be Rumble. Anthony Rumble Johnson has killer strikes, but he hasn't fought the level of competition that GSP has. So he's not on the same level yet, but it's where he's headed. Okay. You've got all these people at 170. I don't understand why they think Jake Shields is going to be the one to dethrone GSP because it's not going to happen. In my personal opinion, John Fitch isn't even going to be able to beat GSP, but he stands the biggest chance because he's done nothing but get better since their title fight. That was his last loss and his only loss in the UFC, and that was in August of 08. So... I don't understand why everybody is trying to give John Fitch a hard time because he doesn't finish fights exciting. Well, he finishes fights, and he finishes them convincingly. Um, he is the winner, hands down, no questions asked. So that's what I got today on UFC um, Welterweight. Go ahead, leave me your comments. You can follow me on Twitter at ENT Elite one Follow me on Facebook, Entertainment Elite one at Hotmail.com. Come on, guys. I need the subscribers. I look forward to hearing from all of you.